culture is always shifting. Um, so um, universal grammar is a very popular um, term. It was made popular in modern times by Noam Chomsky, although the term goes back to the 12th century grammarians known as the modesti. And in the US, the first person to ever talk about universal grammar was Charles Sanders Peirce. Um, his view of grammar was um, both he and Chomsky, interestingly enough, felt that recursion, um, I can talk about recursion separately, but anyway, they thought that recursion was uh, the basis of grammar, of grammar, but for Peirce, it was meaning, recursive meanings, not forms, not the sentences, but the way that, so for example, if I say bachelor, I have to interpret that in terms of, say, unmarried man, and then I interpret unmarried in terms of other symbols, and I interpret man in terms of other symbols, so that every symbol starts us to a recursive chain that has no end. We, we, everything is connected, and to understand one thing, we have to understand a great deal of culture. Um, so uh, the, the difference is, for Peirce, universal grammar followed from logical principles. There was nothing necessarily genetic about it. It simply followed from logical principles. If you had symbols, they were subject to certain logical constraints, and those would affect the form of the language. Um, uh, whereas the second version of universal grammar, uh, Chomsky's, is that not only is, is human biology responsible for underwriting human linguistic capacity, but the genes are there are specific genes linked to language. Um, so those are very different views of universal grammar. Um, so now let's move on to tools. Tools turn out to be a very important part of reasoning about the origins of human language. Tools are individual devices or processes that meet perceived needs of individuals and communities. Uh, or a set of devices, processes, and expertise used to harness the properties of a particular material. Full culturally constructed repertoire of knowledge, conventions, devices, and processes. Values are vital at each stage. So tools are really complicated. This is clearly a complicated tool, but so is a shovel. A shovel. Um, has a specific kind of function, and it's got, you know, if you make a shovel out of, uh, out of rubber, it won't work very well. So there's a whole lot of things that have to go into a, into a, a tool as simple as a shovel or a knife to, to make it be what it is. And it, it starts to take on meaning features that go beyond its function. Human technology enmeshes the material with the ideational. We have ideas, and, we, and they're manifested materially. Um, Tools involve social constructivism. Tools become symbols as they emerge from the values, knowledge structures, and social roles of a particular culture. Symbolism in erectus tools is therefore crucial evidence. So that's what, one thing we really need to look for in addition to the other accomplishments of erectus. Now it's true that other species have tools, but other species' um, tools tend to be opportunistic and one of the interesting things, for example, about Erectus is that they took very good care of their tools, they colored their tools, they carried their tools with them over long distances, they planned ahead. Um, no other species is known uh, to do that, although it's a good Darwinian, I wouldn't want to say that no other species could, you know, I wouldn't want to predict what no other species could do, because every time somebody tries to do that, we find that they can. Um, learning of technical skills takes place using a combination of language, gesture, imitation, and guided intervention. This applies to all Erectus, Neanderthalensis, and Sapiens tools, and we'll, we'll be getting to that. Um, this is partially based on lab experiments with stone tool users, and my experience in the Amazon, I see this too. So, so at, the, at the many archaeology departments, they have napping labs, K-N-A-P-P, -P, not N-A-P, uh, and, uh, and they, they learn to make stone tools. Graduate students learn to make stone tools, and they, bru they bruise their hands, they cut their hands. It's, it's really hard. So the simplest form of stone tool is like the Oldowan tools, which we'll see a picture of. Those take, several, those take a couple of hundred hours very often for students, PhD students, to learn to make accurately. When we get into the more complex uh, tools, it takes even, you know, a lot longer. And what people have found in these labs is that even the simplest tools, it's very hard to simply show by example how to do it. Language tends to be implicated in, in this uh, 
in this skill acquisition. Now this could simply be because they're sapiens, right? And sapiens talk, so why not avail yourself of the speech that, that you have? 